both training wise and just in my own job. So that way, going into a situation, you're already that one step ahead. Uh, my name is Nicholas Lopez. I am a officer with the Los Angeles Police Department. I'm growing up, my father's a retired CHP officer. Uh, my uncle is a correctional officer for 30 years. Uh, my mom was a senior, senior paralegal back home in uh, Kern County. So it's something I grew up with. Uh, it's something that uh, is kind of generational. So I wanted to kind of continue that, just as uh, my dad and my uncle did. I've been an officer for approximately about two and a half years now. I work uh, LAPD Pacific Division Venice Beach Task Force. And one of the unique things about Pacific Division is that obviously we work in Venice Beach. So one of the things that we get trained in is uh, ATV and bicycle training. Outside of training, um, outside of actual technique and physical fighting, um, things, one of the big things that we get on here is body language and being able to kind of decipher how you want to go ahead and handle a certain situation with someone or something that may, you know, turn physical. Being able to read someone's body language or being able to, the way they present themselves, the way they're acting, um, just kind of making decisions in your head. Okay, if he's doing A, B, and C physically or he's giving up these certain signs, um, I can already tell that a situation is going to go this way. Yes. 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 Come on. Time. <laughs> that was awesome. How'd I feel? Good. I need that. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Good kick in the butt. So tell me real quick. Um, so why why is training beneficial for somebody in uh, in your profession? Uh, I think training for law enforcement is very important just because you don't know on any given day what you're going to come in contact with, what kind of radio call, um, what's going to happen with that radio call. It could be someone who's on drugs, it could be someone who's possibly mentally ill, and sometimes you may have to go hands on or make physical contact with that person, and it may lead to a fight. So it's always good to know how to handle yourself and remain calm. Is there a is there a point in time where you had an aha moment where you caught yourself saying, like, hey, you know what, um, if it weren't for training, I, I wouldn't have been able to do this? Uh, yeah, there was a radio call. It was, a, it was an officer that was fighting with the suspect on the ground. When we got there, the suspects, like I let them do, they would put their hands underneath their bodies so as not to get handcuffed. Um, when I got there, I was able to successfully take the arm and put it behind his back so he could get handcuffed. When I went back to review the body footage, I saw that just instinctively, one of the moves of getting the arm and making it accessible and free to place it behind the back is something that we learned here and also in the academy. So it was just muscle memory that I just wound up uh, being able to successfully use that move. Nice, nice. Mr. Nick, if there's anything that you can tell another law enforcement officer um, to encourage them to get on the mat and train. You never know when this training could uh, save your life. Um, any kind of training here, jiu-jitsu, krav, grappling, just get out there, uh, train, because you never know, it can save your life and it'll, uh, it'll get you home to your family and your loved ones at night. Nice. Thanks, sir. Thank you.